and welcome to a CD video. It's a mixture of shorter news pieces and also a few longer form CD reviews. So it's a bit of a mix, a bit of a mashup, I suppose. There's a whole range of genres involved in this one. There's about, what, 15, 16 CDs in there. There's a few box sets as well, all kinds of stuff. We'll have a fine old time, guys. Let's get straight to it. And we'll start with Jamie Coe. This is Summertime Symphony, and it's on the Jasmine label. If there was ever a regional artist, then it was Detroit's Jamie Coe, a man whose stage name was handed to him by none other than Bobby Darren. It was Darren who actually set up a label to release Co Records. Once of the band The Marquis, the song which forms the title of this compilation was apparently written by Darren for Co. It failed to break nationally despite TV appearances covering it. A lost collection in many ways from a man who ultimately felt let down by a quote dishonest industry. Do you want to jump, children, from 1937 to 1946? This one is from Jasmine. It's by the legendary Jimmy Rushing. A total of 24 tracks from the big man who offered a big, bold blues voice backed by some of the finest jazz players around. This collection features Count Basie, Johnny Otis and Jimmy Mundy. And now a box set. Well, it's a sort of multi gatefold kind of thing from the lemon label this is devoted to one ray fennec it's a sort of anthology and it's called just reminding myself playing through the changes and some of you will no doubt be saying who while others will be asking if you played in queen's park rangers defense and uh, that was terry fennec ray wasn't a star but he was an essential part of rock he started in the 60s with the band called The Syndicates, replacing superstar to be Steve Howe. He then joined Spencer Davis Group after Stevie Winwood, another star, left. There's a pattern beginning to form here, isn't there? Along with the Ian Gillen Band and slightly obscure outfits filled with star names like Forcefield. Anyone remember Forcefield? Featuring Jan Ackerman and Cozy Powell. Plus the guitar orchestra. Anyone remember the guitar orchestra? Including Procol Harum guitar man Mick Grabham. Put it this way, the man has been around. In the nicest possible way, of course. And because of that, because of the sheer variety of people he's teamed up with, and the places he's been, the experience he's racked up, and the fact that this was a guy who was wanted by all of these people, tells you something about the man's caliber and his guitar chops. This three CD career overview plus booklet is a fascinating compilation in its own right, filled with a host of obscure tracks from obscure bands, little heard numbers, and fascinating teams of creatives doing their thing. For goodness sake, the man co-wrote the theme tune for the children's TV show Magpie, playing it with the rest of the Spencer Davis group under the pseudonym The Murgatroyd Band. In my eyes, R.A. achieved legendary status right there and then, and that track is included in this compilation. This is a compilation, so mastering quality varies according to the source, but in general terms, Lemon has done a great job to keep the noise floor low and the sound quality high. From Atomicat, now we have the Johnny and Dorsey Burnett songbook. This is a compilation and it comes in a sort of where are we? multi-fold out digipack. Arriving in that double gatefold digipack, the Battling Brothers from Memphis sung a range of rock and roll ditties, but also penned many more. This collection is devoted to the latter and the people who did the warbling. So that includes people like Gene Vincent, Ricky Nelson, Frankie Lyman, and lesser names such as Myron Lee, Sonny James and the Fenderman, and more. It's packed with 30 songs. 
another newsy piece for you. This one is from the label Coco Mojo, and it's the Rock and Roll Vixens Volume 5. A collection of 25 tracks within a double gatefold digipack that were recorded from the mid 50s to the war mid 60s sung by black vocalists of the time and i'm talking about ladies like dd Dee Dee warwick fontella bass baby washington jay duval and rita well you're talking blues here you're talking rhythm and blues vocal harmony and early soul and everyone's a cracker a rather nice box set review for you this is from repertoire it's devoted to graham bond and it's called wade in the water the gbo as it was often known emerged from the alexis corner blues inc the first four members of the gbo had all played in that combo and to play with corner was a risk because bond for example was seen as a jazz man and had even won awards for his early work as a youngster but the uk jazz scene of the time was a mite straight laced and rather stern and bond wanted more jazz players didn't play in blues bands so bond had to use a pseudonym on his own fronting his own band he continued this mindset and served as a host for a forum of talent people came they went but they were always notable and they always added something to the collective so you're talking about people like jack bruce and ginger baker and this set includes baker's first vocal incidentally you're also looking at john mclaughlin keith emerson rick wakeman john heisman dick hextel smith and big jim sullivan plus lots and lots of others now not everyone i've mentioned is in this box set but a fair few are this is a four cd set and it's quite a collection covering a variety of bond related lineups in its 96 tracks split across two dual cases both of which are held within an outer slip case this set has been processed by pete brown x cream and dick hextel smith x coliseum from the original four track masters concentrating on the period between 1963 and 1967 the set features demos live tracks and previously unreleased work in mastering terms the compiled songs vary in quality but that's to be expected there's plenty of boosted mids here with a slight clinical edge to many but overall repertoire has done a good job retaining sonic discipline hence even within tracks like don't let go which offers minimal bass and compressed mids the mastering does its very best to rein in any wayward upper mid barking another one from coco mojo and this is the mojo man special volume 4 voodoo man presented in a double gatefold digipack this collection of 30 blues and rhythm and blues is aimed at the dance floor and includes artists like chuck willis rudy moore muddy water the king's five lou mac and the dodgers the rather nice packaging includes a selection of vintage photographs and scans of original record labels to add a vintage flavor this rather slim digi pack which i hold in my hot and sweaty hands here is from a trio of artists and producers robin trier who i'm sure you will know maxi priest who you may also know and livingston brown who i think is a producer i'm not too aware of him this particular album is from the hasman label and it's called united state of mind an intriguing combo the trio behind this album robin trier maxi priest and livingston brown as i say there's a sense of soul and funk in this one a bit 70s like in tonal presentation but with the added notes of rock guitar and background strings nicely produced with a chocolate warmth to cuddle you into submission another full review and this one is from the band hot tuna it's called trilogy and it's from floating world it was originally a sideline for the jefferson airplane chaps jack cassidy and jorma corkerman hot tuna were formed while airplane was going great guns which meant that hot tuna concerts were quickly arranged in between airplane work apart from the two gentlemen i just mentioned the group was enhanced by will scarlett plus occasional appearances by airplane members marty berlin and spencer dryden 
the group's self-titled, rather low-key jamming debut appeared in 1970, filled with restrained blues and creative expansion. Recorded live in the New Orleans house in Barclay, Corkinen and Cassidy, both childhood friends, show their obvious connection on this fruitful and tight record, which is included in this set. The band were an eager bunch and another LP followed the year after, and that's also in this set, called First Pull Up, Then Pull Down. This is possibly less interesting, yet remains a fun outing. It was more rock orientated and flew nearer to the airplane workouts. It featured violinist Papa John Creech in the lineup and drummer Sammy Piazza. As I say, both of these albums feature here in this three CD set, and that's held in a large jewel case, along with a informative booklet. And jewel cases are becoming rather rare. You don't see them an awful lot nowadays, so enjoy them while you can, I suppose. Hey, but there's a third album here too. It's called Double Dose, and that appeared rather later in 1978, a year before the band split. This is a live double album with studio enhancements, and this outing played into the band's jamming strengths. Because it was released as a double, this album runs over the later parts of CD2 and all of CD3. As for mastering, well, I quite like it. There's a slight 70s glow around the soundstage, a cosy, slightly warming feel from the vocals and bass guitar, but that's balanced by the broad soundstage. The upper mids don't appear to be rolled off though. There's a real steel-like insight from the acoustic guitar picking, for example. Folk songs that influenced Angela Carter from Polypolisma on the Invisible Music label. Carter was, and she passed away in 1992 at the young age of 51, and still is, a respected author encompassing feminist issues, but she was also involved in the folk music revival scene during the 60s. She sang and played with her husband, Paul Carter, and was signed to Topic Records. Interspersed with readings of Carter's writings, Paul Esma successfully navigates these, often quite brutal songs that dig into loss, love, incest, abduction, war and death. It's serious stuff, folks. On Wolfren Records, this is the John Williams Syndicate and, what's it called? Out of Darkness. An experienced man is Williams. He's produced hits for the House Martins, the Proclaimers, Blamange and Paul Heaton. This is actually William's debut album because he can, and it's about time. This 10-tracker includes, would you believe, Petula Clark. Yes, that one. Claudia Bracken, Guy Barker, and a host of others. This music has a folky, bluesy skin to its soft pop. Well produced and rich in tone, Williams has an easy-going rhythmic, foot-tapping production going on. And that one from Jack Scott. And I can't find the blaster thing. It's around here somewhere. Anyway, I'll find it and pull up a picture and you can have a look. This is from the Jasmine label and it's called Crying in My Beer, 1961 to 1962. Despite his rock and roll pioneering efforts, Scott is largely a forgotten figure in music. Why? After all, he had a great voice. He was right up there with Elvis Presley and Roy Orbison. He also had a superb backing group known as the Shantones, which were as accomplished as Elvis's Jordanaires. Scott wrote his own songs, Elvis didn't, and Scott was a talented guitarist. Elvis was a decent rhythm guitarist, according to Johnny Cash. Was Scott's problem, as Goldmine magazine's Phil Marder explained, that he never courted scandal or died before his time? Jack Scott, quote, never created headlines by dying in plane or car crashes, by marrying underage relatives, or transporting underage females across state lines, by quitting to become a minister, or committing suicide, or anything else guaranteed to garner attention even before today's 24 hours news blitz. This is a fascinating CD because it's filled with Scott's work at Capitol, a torrid time for the man. It wasn't me anymore, Scott said, 
when I was with Carlton and Top Rank labels, they let me do what I wanted to do. They built the records around me. On Capital, the producer would get the wild track going and say, this is the trend of music that's happening today. And he'd try and get me to do that. It might have been happening, but it wasn't good for me. There were songs that I had no business doing. And this compilation is full of those songs. It's a collection full of tension from the single A Little Feeling Called Love to My Dream Come True. This is the sound of an artist in conflict with his record label. The cover art tells the story in a single frame of anguish, as you can see here. Oh, and the mastering quality is pretty decent overall. From John Diva and the Rockets of Love, this is the American Amadeus from SPV. Well, I say SPV, it's really their imprint Steam Hammer that holds this particular record. And yes, the title sounds rather pretentious, or at the very least, over the top to the point of cheese. And it is, and it isn't, and it isn't bad at all. It's actually lots of fun and hits you square between the eyes while bedecked in the clothes of 80s US rock. From the pomp and glam of the album's title track to the fast-paced, big hair-inspired rock of Bling Bling Marilyn. This one will have you digging into the back of the wardrobe for those spandex trousers. On Compass Records now, we have by request by, well, it's the son of Jim Croce. This is AJ Croce. This album mixes blues, jazz, and soul in a warm, fuzzy cloud. Something that's been a theme in this video, I reckon. Maybe it's a reaction to what's been going on around the world. Many artists are looking to offer warmth, a cuddle, comfort, and the like. That's certainly here on the track, Ooh Child. Even the upbeat rockers like Stay With Me have a warm glow about them. This is an album that ever so slightly reminds me of later period Elvis Costello. And that's your lot, folks. Hope you enjoyed this particular overview of CD news and reviews. There'll be more to come in the future. Let me know if you have any of these releases and your thoughts about them. They'd be very welcome indeed. Hope you can join me for the next video. I'd love to have your company then. And I will see you soon. So until that next time, bye-bye for now.